So one of the most cool releases this year has been Framer Workshop, which lets you build custom code components on Framer with AI, similar to vibe coding. Now, as someone who's been making custom code components for Framer for two years now, there's a lot of tricks I've learned to actually build great components. So in this video, I wanna give you a full crash course on how to use Framer Workshop and build any component in Framer without limitations. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside of Framer. Now, if you wanna use Workshop, basically you need to go down to the plugins tab at the bottom here, and you just need to open the Workshop plugin. And let's actually give this a shot first so we can actually see how it sort of works. We have this like UI here. It gives us some suggestions in terms of prompts that we could actually use. And it gives us actually the option to choose which LLM, basically the AI, which type of AI or LLM do we want to use? So whether we want to use Claude, Claude 4 or ChatGPT. Now there's pros and cons to all of these. If we use GPT, it's a little bit faster. Claude tends to be a little bit better in terms of output just usually is for code but for now let's just stick to gpt now inside our text prompt here i can actually write a prompt uh, which will get into the best sort of tips for prompting and language later on so we can put a prompt in here so for example create a component of a clock that shows my local time let me style the clock in the properties panel and we also have a plus down here where we can essentially attach a reference image. So if we actually click on create here, what it's gonna do is it's going to start building that code component and writing that code. Now, if I actually go to my assets tab here, you will notice it actually generates a new code file under this folder called workshop called clock. Now, if I drag this component onto the canvas here, and we preview this, you will now notice it shows my local time, which is currently 8.30 in the morning. Now, if I scroll down here and actually select that component, you will notice that I have my component controls. Now, we refer to these as property controls. And actually understanding this terminology will be really important for actually briefing this uh, component builder, this AI chatbot essentially, so we can actually make the relevant changes that we wanna make. But it's done a pretty good job at letting me kind of have these different fields here that we can sort of like customize. So if I want to update the color, let's say I want to make it a bit of a blue, we can do that. Maybe I add a background color, make it like really ugly. That's totally fine as well. The radius, the fonts, and we've got the ability to basically toggle on or off the seconds. Now you will notice too, that since we actually created this component in Workshop, we can also edit it in Workshop as well. So if I click on edit in Workshop at the bottom here, or since I've already got the plugin open, you notice it's kind of showed the history of this component itself. So we've already created this V1, and now I can actually make a change to that component. So we can actually take this a step further. So maybe I actually want this to be a little bit more visual and we actually want to make it uh, show an actual clock. So make it, look like an actual clock. So I can request that change and basically the Framer AI workshop tool will actually go ahead and edit that code. Okay, cool. So it's basically done what we wanted here. Let's actually remove that background color because it's pretty ugly. And you notice we now have our clock that's working pretty well. And if I add back my seconds, you actually see that it's updating in real time. So in terms of like output for something that's pretty quick, fantastic. And I could tweak this further. I could uh, ask for another feature. I could ask for more controls here. But I think the real trick with like Framework Workshop and any other sort of like AI builder, but specifically Workshop here, is to know how to actually speak to it so you can get what you want. And I think the prompting is extremely important here. And it's also worth noting early on, there's probably a point where you actually want to pull this away from Framework Workshop. Now, again, we'll get to that later, but essentially, luckily for us, Framer actually make all that code generated available to us. So we can actually pull this code into another place to actually add to it further. But for now, let's just leave this here and actually let's look at probably the most important thing, which is terminology of components. Now, I've created this little demo component here, which, yes, looks very boring, but it kind of covers everything that we need to know. Now, essentially how code components work in Framer, it's essentially a React component that's displayed visually on the canvas. So if I go to my Assets tab here and open the code here, 
This is just React code. Now, I'm not a developer, so I'm not going to lie and say I know what all of this means. But if you kind of start to look, you can kind of start to see the sort of structure that we've got here. In particular, probably the most important thing that you really want to know is around property controls. Now, this is the first thing you want to know is when we refer to our properties panel here on the right-hand side, and we have all these sort of um, variables here inside the component itself, we actually refer to these technically as property controls. And there's a bunch of different property controls that we can use. So we have a string control, which is basically a text input. We have a number control here. We have a color control, so we can actually use the color picker. We have a Boolean, which is basically our toggle. We have a enum, enum, not sure how you pronounce it, but essentially that's our drop down option. We have this segmented enum, which is basically a row of buttons. We have a fused number, which lets you set one number for all sides. So for example, you might want to set the radius of a button. You could actually do that here. We have an array, which is essentially a repeating list of items, very similar to how a ticker or a carousel component works in Framer already. We have the ability to create an object, which is essentially a group of set controls. And it's basically like creating a sub menu and you can have an object inside of an object inside of an object if you really want to. So you can go quite deep in terms of how that UX works. We have an image field, a file upload field, a font field, so we can actually customize all those font properties that Framer make available. We have a date picker, a time selector, the ability to add a link, and even the ability to add a transition in Framer, which can be really powerful. So essentially, when we think about prompting our Framer workshop, if we use some of this terminology, we can actually get way better results. So let's actually go back to our clock here. And let's say we want to customize the actual UX and property controls that we have on the right hand side here. So I can edit this in workshop and I can ask for a very specific change. So for example, I'm going to ask it to update the property controls, create an object, which is the sort of like grouping for styling, which will contain time color, background, radius, and font, and then have another object, which is another group for settings, which will include show seconds. So let's actually click on create and let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so this is a good example here where Framer exactly wasn't picking up what I wanted it to do and it was running into a few errors. So I actually had to tweak my copy a little bit uh, just so it would understand it. But now essentially you can actually see that we actually have this component set up in these two sort of like groups or objects here, which makes it a lot easier in terms of actually controlling this whole component. Now you can play around with Workshop for hours to really create some cool effects, but I think understanding those property controls and ex exactly what you can and cannot use, is actually gonna give you a lot of power. Now, again, if we go to assets here, we have that code available. Now, unfortunately, one of the limitations with Framer Workshop is let's say I take the code that's been generated and I add my own code to it. So let's say I'm a developer and I know a little bit about what I'm doing. You can then no longer actually use Workshop to edit that code, which is just unfortunate. Um, but I also understand why Framer have done this because, you know, they don't want to fix your broken code. But the reason I actually mention this is because there's probably a lot of times you actually want to pull the code that's been generated from Framer and actually pull it out so you can work on it and expand on it further. So I think Framer do a really good job at actually kind of getting you from zero to one. But when you actually want to build a little bit more complexity and go from one to two, you actually might want to use a tool like Cursor or Claude directly to get better output. Because inside the Framer Workshop plugin, there's going to be controls and limitations that have been set up by Framer themselves. So you can actually get good results. But sometimes you actually just need a little bit more of an open door so you can do a bit more and try to experiment as well. Now, obviously, take that with a grain of salt because when you take it outside of Framer, things might break and you don't know why and you kind of get stuck down this very annoying rabbit hole, which is just one of the sort of curses with uh, AI coding. But if you do want to take it to that next step, I'm going to recommend a custom GPT that you can use. So this is a custom chat GPT uh, by Isaac Roberts, who is actually a developer on our team. And he's basically, this was before Framer Workshop, but it actually works really well. And I can ask for very specific updates in here, and it's going to utilize 
or OpenAI to actually generate our code components or make updates to it. Now, whether you want to use this one in particular, which I will recommend, or if you just want to start a new chat and kind of give it your own sort of prompting, you'll be able to do that. So for example, I could paste in my code here and then ask it to make a specific update. So I might want to say inside my properties control, welcome to my component. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll let just chat GPT do its thing. Now, what it's actually done is generated that code for me. And you will notice it's generated from the add property controls uh, section, which is usually at the bottom of your code base. Okay, so let's say once we're happy with our component, what do we actually do with it? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can just use it inside your project. But if you actually want to share this component, what you can actually do is go to that code here and go to copy import, which is essentially going to copy this link here. And now if I paste this into my browser here, you notice we kind of get this link. Now, if I actually copy everything from this URL to the .js, this sort of link here that's been generated, I can use this as essentially an import link. And then if I give this link to someone, they can actually just copy and paste it, and that component's going to be imported into their project. So if I just copy that and then paste it here, you will notice it's actually going to show on my canvas, just like so. Now, the other real big opportunity here with Workshop is actually building these code components and then selling them on the Framer marketplace. So again, this is a pretty new release, but Framer now let you actually sell these components and you can see all these different people who are uh, selling these components here. And there's a ton of cool ones here for inspiration as well. So for example, there's like this really cool like 3D slider, which has actually been made in Workshop, which is cool. But essentially, if you go to your creator space inside the frame of marketplace, you can actually upload this component here. You can add your details, you can set the price, and then you can actually publish that. And then you keep 100% of that revenue as well, which is a super win-win for creators. Now, like I mentioned at the start of this video, Vibe coding with Workshop in Framer can go very far. And I actually think it's one of those things where you have to experiment and understand the limitations. Now, I think the three big things you really need to understand when actually using Framer Workshop is one, the actual property controls and the language around them and being able to prompt that in Framer Workshop so you can get better results. Number two is actually understanding when to move away from Framer and use other LLMs or adding your own code yourself to actually build out that component and make it a little bit more powerful. And then number three, understanding how you can actually share that component, whether you're sharing it online for free, whether you're just using it inside your own project, or whether you want to make some money with it on the marketplace, understanding that full flow, you're actually going to get a lot more value out of Framer Workshop than you might initially think. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer tutorials just like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer videos every single week. And if you are interested in mastering Framer, like truly mastering it, feel free to check out my A to Z course on Framer called the Ultimate Framer Masterclass, which is by far the most update place to learn Framer this year. But until next time, I'll catch you later.